Why did the IETF specifically choose 192? 168 sixteenths to be a private IP address class? Why did the Internet Engineering Task Force, IETF, choose 192.168 sixteenths to be a private IP address class and not something else? Why specifically 192.168 sixteenths and 10 eighths and 172.16 twelfths and not 145.243 sixteenths, for example? Is there a reason those IP addresses were chosen to be the standard for private IP addresses over all the other possibilities? I know who chose these address ranges. Unfortunately, he is dead, so I cannot ask him exactly why he chose them, but I can make some well-informed guesses. There isn't much online dating prior to the mid-1990s, when the internet really started to take off. What history of the internet exists is mostly in the RFCS which define it, which date back to 1969, at the start of the ARPANET. Through them you can watch the internet progress from a fledgling network of a few primitive mainframes, being designed by some of the most brilliant minds of the time, to the network we can hardly imagine living without today. This answer draws almost entirely from those RSCS, and in small part from my personal experience, as I was on the internet in this era. First, the ITF did not pick these IP address ranges or any others. Allocation of special use addresses is currently and has always been the job of the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. The YANA has always been a role, rather than a specific organization, and that role has changed hands exactly once. Currently it is held by ICANN, but from 1972 until his death in 1998, when that organization was created to replace him, YANA was essentially one man, John Postel. Of course, he first called the role czar of socket numbers, a necessary task he took on himself because it needed to be done. He ended up the czar of virtually every number that could be assigned addresses, protocol numbers, ports, you name it, largely because he was willing to do it, and by the time the internet opened to public commerce, he had been doing it for over 20 years. He assigned the numbers and the internet registry, then Sri Nick, this was expanded to a distributed collection of registries worldwide, published them. The last RFC from Sri showing a list of internet address assignments was RFC 1166 from 1990. It is a very lengthy list, so it should not be surprising that this data was moved to online databases. Comparing it to its predecessor RFC 1117 shows the rate of expansion of the internet even then, years before it opened to the public. So. Now we are in a position to understand the address ranges in RFC 1918 a little better. This is actually the second revision of the RFC. The first was RFC 1597, published almost two years earlier in March 1994. In its little-known rebuttal, RFC 1627, the contemporary arguments against private address spaces were laid out. RFC 1627 also happens to mention who assigned the three address spaces. They were assigned by Yana, that is, John Postel, at the request of the authors of RFC 1597, and if the complaint in RFC 1627 is to be believed, he did so via back channels, rather than the usual open processes. You can see that RFC 1597 itself went straight to RFC status without the usual preceding internet drafts, so it too was approved via back channels, again by Postel, who was also RFC editor at the time. So it might never be possible to answer this question conclusively. Now as to why he chose these three address ranges, 
Let me return your attention to the RFC S1166 and 1117 from SRI which have the then current IP address range assignments. In both of them you will notice that Network 10 was still allocated to the defunct ARPANET, which had shut down in 1990. Postal, in his role as Yana, would know that this range was no longer in use and could be reassigned. I posit that Postal picked Network 10, because he knew it to be available and not in use. Similarly, I expect Postal picked 100 and 92.168 because, at the time he made the choice, it was the next available, or nearly the next available, network to be assigned from the former Class C space. This probably can't be proved one way or the other, but the pace of address assignments shown in the RFC S strongly suggests that they would have been in this general vicinity around 1993 to 1994 when the assignments were made. Addresses in 192.159 were being assigned in 1992. No dates are available for assignments in 192.160 to 192.167 as these were at some point reallocated to RIPE. Answering this question for 172.16 to 172.31 is more difficult. Nothing I could find suggests why this range was selected. Assignments in the former class B space have not gotten nearly that high yet, as far as I can discover. I can only speculate that Yana threw a dart at a dartboard, rolled dice, or otherwise pulled the number out of his nether regions. Finally, a note about John Postel. Despite the apparent way in which this RFC was brought about fully formed without initial input from the community, I do not mean to imply that, and this should not be construed as John Postel somehow executed the Yana role poorly or unfairly. He was one of the strongest influences on the early internet, and you still feel that influence today every time you get a glimpse of the behind-the-scenes machinery of the internet, but he was always concerned with doing the job right. To quote from One Remembrance. There is no glory in doing administration and operations. Quite the opposite. People notice when it is done badly but rarely offer praise when it is done well. People in administrative positions often become petty bureaucrats. Since there is so little reward in the job, they artificially make it a base of power. So it has confused some who heard John referred to as the Internet Number Czar. They did not realize that the community imparted the title to John out of affection and deep appreciation for his having brought order to essential infrastructure services. In particular the community used that term in full knowledge that John took his position as a trust rather than as an opportunity for personal power. We always knew that his views came from legitimate beliefs and we never had to worry that he was somehow considering political or personal advantage. We might not agree with him, but we always knew was driven first by a concern that the right thing be done. Because it made sense at the time, D. Remember, back when the private IP address ranges were assigned, there were several issues network engineers had to contend with. Some of the most powerful routers at the time had about as much CPU power and RAM storage as today's pocket graphing calculators and some of the ones today still run circles around yesteryear's routers. I remember when CPU speed was measured in kilohertz and RAM storage was measured in kilobytes, not the Giga S like they are today. The internet was growing quickly. The IP4 address space was limited, and looking like it was going to run out by year 2000 or so, etc. Thus, many IP address ranges were already assigned, and they didn't want to have to ask companies to give back the IP address ranges just so they could reassign them to private ranges. 
They also wanted to try to make it as easy as possible for companies to work with the private ranges few companies would have cooperated if they had to invest a lot of money into making their networks cope with one or two dozen ranges slash IP addresses here and there. This part is admittedly guesswork on my part, but based largely on both logic and experience in setting up networks. They probably gathered together a listing of all unassigned network numbers and looked for a distinguishing pattern that met with the desired criteria, one single class A, network numbers which have a high bit of 0xxxxxxx binary and the network number were class A, 16 class B, network numbers 10xxxxxx binary, and 256 class C, network numbers 1104x binary, addresses. The class B and C addresses should all be consecutive, as well. The choice for 16 and 256 was probably partially arbitrary after doing this stuff for a while, you tend to start to think in powers of 2 and probably partially because it was what they could find that was available for reservation. From this, they probably selected the final ranges from those available addresses which would allow router manufacturers to do a simple bitwise test on the address to determine whether to route slash forward slash drop the packet. There are also some properties of the bit patterns that I can see helping to build compact NAT tables, as well. The 10.x.y.z address is obvious, since it only has to match one network number. The 172.16.y.z to 172.32.y.z has the pattern that if you build a table with the low order 4 bits cross-referencing the high order 4 bits, the entire range fills across one single row of the table, without splitting into two rows that is, the second octet is always 00014x, binary. In 192.168.y.z the binary for 168 is 10,101,000 that is, the lower 3 bits are always 0, and the higher 5 bits alternate 1 and 0. While these may appear arbitrary, if you've ever done any machine language programming or microcode decoding, these kind of patterns allow you to test only a few bits to make a private slash public determination without having to decode the entire IP address first. This would allow routers to process such addresses quickly without having to maintain extensive lookup tables in memory. Thus, the router could push a private network packet back out to the private network without fully decoding it first, shaving precious clock cycles off the speed of the router and network. If you're curious, look into how serial data transmission, like a UART, handles each byte of data, it can only send slash receive one single bit at a time, at the speed of the controlling clock, and usually frames the data in additional bits such as parity and sync bits. It would be too time consuming to try to calculate things like parity on a whole byte at once, so instead, it maintains a special bit that each clock cycle. That bit gets modified by the next bit that gets shifted in slash out of the send slash receive register. As soon as the entire byte is sent slash received, the value left in the parity bit is already correct without having to recalculate it. The concept is more or less do the work at the same time as you are doing something else, in the case of a serial chip, it's calculating parity at the same time that it's sending slash receiving. For a router slash switch, you can get higher performance if it's already decoding the IP address as each bit of the address comes in from the wire, and possibly already knows where to send the packet next before it's even finished being read in from the network cable. Also, this is just logic slash guesswork on my part, based on 25 years of doing this kind of work. I don't know if we'll ever know the exact reasons behind the final numbers chosen as I don't recall any papers slash RFCs slash etc. Ever giving the full rationale. The closest I've seen are just some comments suggesting the chosen ranges should make it relatively easy and efficient for companies to use them with minimal effort slash investment slash re-engineering.
In the primordial internet, the network now denoted 10.0.0.08 was allocated to the ARPANET. By the time the IETF and YANA got around to assigning private address ranges, ARPANET was defunct, and its former address space was available for private use. The other two ranges made Class B and Class C networks available for private IPs, in addition to aforementioned Class A. The RFC explains the reason why we chose three ranges from Class A, B and C respectively. SIDRA had been specified but had not been widely implemented. There was a significant amount of equipment out there that still was classful. As far as I recall the choice of the particular ranges went as follows. 10 eighths, the ARPANET had just been turned off. One of us suggested it and John considered this a good reuse of this historical address block. We also suspected that NET 10 might have been hard-coded in some places, so reusing it for private address space rather than in interas routing might have the slight advantage of keeping such silliness local. 172. 16 twelfths, the lowest unallocated slash 12 in class B space. 192. 168 sixteenths, the lowest unallocated slash 16 in class C block 192 eighths. In summary, IANA allocated this space just as it would have for any other purpose. As the IANA, John was very consistent unless there was a really good reason to be creative. Daniel, co-author of RFC 1918. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing.